In this video, I want to talk about uh, finding the critical points uh, of a given graph. So the question is, find the intercepts, that is the x and the y intercept. Then you want to find the turning points, which is maximum, minimum, and the point of inflection. And uh, and then we want to gra uh, graph it on this grid. Okay, so first let's find the intercept. So they have already factorized this, so that's helpful. So y is equal to x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 4. Okay, so for x-intercept, for x-intercept, uh, we have to set y equal to 0. So if you set y equal to 0, you have 0 is equal to x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 4. So if you set this equal to 0, so let me set x squared minus 1 equal to 0. So this means x squared is equal to 1. So we can say x is equal to plus or minus 1. So you have got two x intercepts. And if you set this equal to 0, I can say x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 4. So x is equal to plus or minus 2. So we can say in coordinate form, we can say that the x-intercepts are plus or minus 1, comma, 0, and plus or minus 2, comma, 0. So let's plot these points first. So you have the x-intercepts is plus or minus 1. So this is plus 1, minus 1. And you've got uh, minus 2 and plus 2. So these are the x-intercepts. Okay, so now let's find the y-intercept. So for y-intercept, for y-intercept, you have to set x is equal to 0. So if you set x equal to 0 in this equation, y would be uh, 0 squared. 0 squared is 0, minus 1 is minus 1, times 0 squared is 0, minus 4. So your y-intercept is 4. So writing it as, as a coordinate, it is 0, comma, 4. So let's plot that point, 0, comma, 4. It is this point. Okay, slowly it is developing. So now we need to find the turning point. Okay, so uh, let me cancel this. So I need this working space. Okay, so yeah. Let's differentiate it. So for turning point for TP. For TP, turning point, uh, we have to differentiate. So D squared Y, sorry. Let's differentiate. So dy by dy by dx is I'm differentiating this. Okay. That will be how much? Four or that will be four x cubed minus ten x. And for turning point, this is equal to 0. So if you set that equal to 0, let's factorize this. So this implies, you can say 2x, you can factor out. You've got 2x squared minus 5 equal to 0. So now you can set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. So when 2x equal to 0, you can say x is equal to 0. So we know when x is 0, what is y? y is equal to 4. So this is a maximum or minimum. So let me write, we already know when x is 0, y is 4. Okay. So when you set this equal to 0, so you can say 2x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. So we can say 2x squared is equal to 5. Now when you divide both sides by 2, I can say x squared is equal to 2.5. Okay, so x is equal to uh, plus square root of 5, uh, or x is equal to minus square root of 5. Minus square root of 5. So we need to find the y values minus square root of 2.5. 
So <clears throat> let's find the y value. What would be y value? Y values would be the same because when you're squaring it, it's uh, raising it by 4 to be the same number. So let's use the calculator. So we know the function. We want to put 2.5. So go uh, menu run. So we know the function is x raised to 4. So I'll put this in the bracket. Shift square root of 2.5 raised to 4. Uh, minus phi bracket uh, shift square root of 2.5 squared plus 4, which is minus 2.25. Okay, so if you put minus there, will it change? So let me put minus there. You are raising it by 4 and raising and squaring it. So the answer would be the same. If you put minus there, is minus 2.25. So for both this, this is, this would be minus 2.25. And uh, this will also be minus 2.25. So let's plot this point. So let's put uh, square root of 2.5. So what's that? Use a calculator, so shift square root of 2.5 is 1.58, or so it's 1.6. So this is 1.6. So 1.58 is between one, so this is somewhere here, and minus 2.25. Okay, so it's somewhere here. So I'll put a point here. So this is a point here. And this is, will be this point. Okay. So this seems to be the minimum, but you'll have to use calculus. So the graph seems to be going like this, goes up, and so it'll be a W shape. So we'll come to that later. Okay. So now we need to find, okay, so now we need to find the point for point of inflection. So for point of inflection, we need to find the second derivative. Uh, the second derivative helps you to find the, the point of inflection and also determine the nature of turning point. So let's differentiate it. So we know dy by, this is your dy by dx. So using your first derivative, you can write the second derivative. So d squared y by dx squared would become what? So this is 12x squared minus 10, isn't it? So I'm going to set that equal to 0 for point of inflection. So we can say 12x squared is equal to 10. So dividing both sides by 2, so that you can say 6x squared is equal to, uh, this is 10, sorry. 12x squared is equal to 10. Okay, so yeah, uh, dividing both sides by 6, so it'll be x squared is equal to 5 over 6. So x is equal to plus or minus shift square root, uh, sorry, square root of 5 divided by 6. So let me find the approximate value. So uh, if you go shift square root of 5 divided by 6. That will be 0 0.91, so roughly 0 0.9. So this is equal to plus or minus. So it's plus 0 0.9, one dot dot dot, or minus 0 0.91. So x is equal to this, or x is equal to this. Your y values will be the same because you're going to uh, raise it by 4 or uh, uh, square it. So I'm going to save this as a letter, which will make life easier. So you can go shift alpha a. This is square root of 5 over 6. I'm going to execute it. And I'm going to, let's use the function. So the function is, so I can write like this, alpha a raised to 4 
minus phi times alpha a squared uh, plus 4. So this will give an ex it's 0 0.52. Okay, now if you put minus a, it's not going to change. So if you want to do in a different way, suppose if you put minus alpha a raised to 4 minus phi times uh, alpha, let me put uh, alpha a, let me put a minus, minus, oops, uh, I need to cancel this, delete, and I want to put alpha a inside the bracket, and square plus 4. Hopefully you'll understand, you'll get the same answer, 0 0.52. So yeah, so yeah, this is uh, uh, z plus 0 0.52, yeah, and this will also be 0 0.52. This is, uh, this is x is equal to, let me write this properly. So this is x is equal to minus 0 0.91 and your y value would be the same, it'll be 0 0.52. So let's graph that, 0 0.9 and 0 0.5, okay? So where is that point? That point is, this is somewhere here, yeah. this is your, this is your point of inflection. So you can use your common sense, your graph should look like this. It's, this is minimum, We'll confirm this. We'll also have to show that this is minimum using calculus. So the graph would look like this. Oops. So this is going down. Okay, so this is your y-intercept. Goes like this. So this is your, your graph looks like this. So this is your, these are your two points of inflection. These are the, your two minimums, and this is your maximum. So let, let's show why this is uh, maximum or minimum. So let me show, yeah. So we know the second derivative is this. Okay, so yeah. So for d squared y by dx squared, when x is equal to 0. So what's the second derivative? This is your second derivative. If you put 0, it's going to be negative 10. And for negative 10, that means it is less than 0, which implies this is your maximum. At, at your maximum, your second derivative has to be less than 0. Okay, and what happens if it is d squared y by dx squared when x is equal to, which are the other two points, it's plus or minus, you can put both of them together, plus or minus square root of 2.5. So if you're going to put plus or minus square root of 2.5, this is going to be uh, greater than zero. I hope you understand, because 12 times anything, it'll be two, two, square root of 2.5, Square root of 2.5 squared is 2.5, isn't it? So it's 12 times 2.5 is how much? Uh, it's 24 and 6, so 30 minus 10. Okay, that is 20. So that means this, at these points, you have the minimum because your second derivative is greater than 0. And at minimum, your second derivative is greater than 0. And here, this is your graph. The graph looks like this. So let's confirm this on a calculator. So go to graph, go to graph, and type in the equation x raised to 4 minus 5x squared plus 4. And set your, set your scale for standard scale. Yeah, this is good. So just to show you, so let me make it slightly bigger, make it standard. And So this is your, so you go g sol the minimum. 1.5, this is minus 2.5, minus 2.25, which is one minimum, this is your maximum. Sorry, this is the other minimum, and you go g sol maximum. 
zero four is maximum. And for point of inflection, y calc when x is shift square root of bracket phi divided by six. Close the bracket. This is one point of inflection. Okay, and then again go g sol y calc when x is minus shift square root of phi divided by six. So you've got two points of inflection. So till here it's concave up. Okay, now from year to so the next point of inflection, this point, you have concave down. And from this point, you've got concave up. So concave up, concave down, and from here again, concave up. That's why you're getting two points of inflection, two minimums and one. 